Hello and welcome back to Pal World. Last time we went ahead and took down ourselves a tower boss in the volcano at the good old tower of the Brothers of the Eternal Pyre. Today we're going to be going ahead and working towards the desert tower, the tower of the PIDF. And the boss of this tower is going to be pal that we actually have in our party right now. And that pal is in fact Valeris, the fire type bird. We know the good old remaining bosses. We have Phalaris, and then after that, we have Shadowbeak. I feel like we are in a decent spot to take on this boss. So, in between episodes, just to clarify, I did go ahead. I gained two levels uh, by going around and catching a bunch of pretty easy pals, basically like 20 to 30 in the pal deck, and a couple of other things like Dig Toys and Hang You that were in like the low level desert near the Anubis boss. Got a bunch of those. Because of that, that gets us level 46. A party is also pretty close to level 46. Obviously, we're not going to be taking Choodle into the fight, which breaks my heart a little bit, but we are not going to bring our Ice type into a Fire type fight. That would be silly. We do have, however, some Jormantides. We also have ourselves, surprisingly, an Azerobe. And the reason for this is because this passive is going to hopefully allow us to have a bunch of damage if we feel like we are lacking damage in the fight, as this does apply water damage to our attacks while we are mounted on the Azerope. Azerope doesn't have great defense, don't get me wrong, but it does have a couple of water type moves, which should, ha should have some impact on the fight. Uh, it also has Vanguard, which increases our attack, and we also have a decent attack stat because we have leveled it a little bit. We have a passive that is increasing it, which I'm, I think is probably the Vanguard passive, actually. I think that just applies all times, which is actually very convenient. Uh, but our shotgun should be doing a ton of damage while we're on the back of Vanguard if we need it. We do have two Yormantides, though, who are hopefully going to be carrying the show, as they do have Bubble Blast, which is one of the skill fruits that I've picked up on our brave Yormantide with the extra attack. Not an attack that is comparable to Chillip, but an attack that is decent regardless. And our other Yormantide has Acid Rain with Blood of the Dragon, which isn't super useful, but it does still have Lord of the Sea, which is always going to be on our Yormantides. So, we're going to start this off exactly like last time. We're going to go on a journey. We're going to go and explore this Northern Ice region. We're going to do a couple of dungeons, see if we can pick up any good old accessories that will hopefully help us out. If we can get a pal metal armor recipe, I set some pal metal ingots to craft. We have 500 crafted and ready to go if we can find ourselves a recipe. If not, I think we can make the base armor at level 46, which should hopefully be enough for us. But obviously, having more defense would be a good idea if we want to implement the strategy of riding around on Azero, blasting it in the face of a shotgun, because that's dangerous. So... That's the plan for today. We're going to go ahead and start getting ourselves some of these dungeons found. We'll probably also take on the King Paco boss and the Lylee knocked while we're up here, because I feel like we could probably do both of those at this point. There it is, King Paco Christ, which, to be honest, I wouldn't mind catching. If we find that we are struggling to catch it, it's not the end of the world, but I feel like we could probably catch it decently. I don't think we'll have too much trouble with this fight. I might be uh, a little bit overconfident. We will see. Right now, let's just go ahead, let Phalaris do its thing, we'll just stay out of the way, be ready to dodge, as we do. Phalaris is struggling a little bit by the looks of it. I don't know why it was taking so long to attack. Had to consider whether he actually wanted to annihilate this poor creature that just has isolated itself off in the ice area. Okay, there we go. We catch ourselves the King Packer. That actually took forever to get those catches going, but we do get it caught. It is also a lot of XP for our team. That does let our, one of our Yormantides even hit level 46, which is nice. Azerobe's the one that could really use the XP because I didn't think about the idea of using the Azerobe until a bit later on. I was just going to kind of go in there with a bunch of Yormantides and call it a day, but I like the Azerobe idea. Oh, we do have a dungeon visible from the exit from the King Packer, and it looks like it does have a dungeon actually in it. Let's see if we can get any good accessories. Level 45. Okay. Okay. I thought they'd be 50, to be honest, because of the area they're in. 50 is dealable. Uh, we should be fine to use Chilla in here. I'm going to try and avoid people if I can. <laughs> Just like real life. Ooh, Maritha in here. Ripe is such a cool design. Oh, Reptyro Crist. I don't know if we have one of those actually in our pile deck. 
We have a Reptyro for sure, but do we have a Reptyro crit? We do not. Well then. I think we have to catch one in that case. I think that's the rules. Um, let's go ahead, bring Phalaris out, and blast one, and see how it goes. Hopefully it can live a fireball. Okay, does live a fireball. That is good. Uh, I'm going to throw out a hypersphere and hope that that will be enough. And then also try and just KO the one in the back. KO the one in the back. Nice and easy. A spike might hit us. Didn't we dodge? I'll ultra sphere if I have to. I might have to. 27% is an okay rate though. We should be able to catch that easy enough. Plus, any more XP is useful because eventually we are going to want to hit level 50 for the legendaries and stuff like that. It is swift. It didn't look it. Ice cold blood runs through its body. If heated rapidly, its blood evaporates, causing an immense vapor explosion. Lunaris are in here. Interesting. Oh. Oh, it looks red from a distance. I feel like I got baited by that last time. It is red. Good. Gold key. Refined metal armor schematic one. That's so underwhelming for a gold key in a level 45 dungeon. I really thought it would be power metal armor. I really did. I was hoping. Blast. Ooh. Those are the numbers I like to see. <gasps> There's no way I win. <laughs> this is the end for me. I can't defeat that towering menace. The body of a Chad. All right, Phalaris, we're going to give this our best shot. But we're going to get annihilated by this giant Wumpo. 4,451 HP, huh? It's a lot. It is a lot. Going to dismount so we get the second attack off. Uh, I don't think I'm going to worry about catching it. I do think I'm just going to KO it. I'm also curious if I can just... Like, can I just go loot while this is happening? No, I can't. Okay, I was going to say. I wasn't sure if they had any protection. I never actually checked if they had any kind of protection. But it does seem like that is the case. Flares, go sit over there so that you're not falling off the cliff or anything. The big phoenix flare. Oh, buddy. You can't get stuck on the rock like that. That's embarrassing. Oh. So embarrassing. All right. Well, we're fine. Should be able to finish this up easy enough. Possibly just one more little fireball. Boop. Nice. Nothing too crazy from there, but these are the drops that we're really after. Let's see what we have as our reward for a level 45 dungeon. We have a future techno technical manual, which is three tech points. Okay, I thought it was going to be something cooler than that. I don't know why. And a pendant of diligence plus two. On the one hand, it's really, really good to know that we can get plus two pendants from here, and plus one is not the maximum. However, it's also really unfortunate that we got the one for work speed first. Literally the only completely useless pendant that I think we could pick up. Oh, we do have a chest over here. Just like last time, though, we will go ahead and try and clear out the area, see what ones we can find, as I would like to go ahead and clear out a bunch of dungeons, as Palmel Lama would be very useful. Also an attack pendant. Would be interesting to see how much attack it would actually give. I want to know if it's a percentage that it increases or if it's like a flat amount. Because if we could get like a flat 30 attack or something like that, that's probably too high of a number. But if we could get a flat 30 attack, then I imagine it would probably be worth it over a defense talisman. With the 10 minute time constraint and all that being a, a big factor in the boss fights. Did it just say Azro Blunt Hydro Laser? Did it tell me that that wasn't a lie? It wasn't a lie. Ooh. Ooh. That's actually huge for the fight. That's really nice. Okay. Level 40, Azro does learn Hydro Laser. What is happening here? Do I actually have to grapple? Something I actually have to grapple on? Well, I guess I could probably climb it normally or use a flying mount. But... Wait, is there any reason to grapple up this? Yes. Yes, there is. This is different. I don't know if I've ever had anything to climb in one of these. 
Uh, humans, which honestly, humans give decent XP, so bop. 7k for Azrobes, not terrible. Ah, yes. The all directions path. Uh, left looks like it leads straight to the boss, and honestly, I am fine with just going straight to the boss. Oh, <gasps> no. You wouldn't make me hurt him. You wouldn't do this to me. No. This is foul. There's no way you would make me hurt a poor Quiven. Oh, and chill it's even my type effect of one, and it's gonna nuke it. I'm about to nuke this beautiful, beautiful creature. No. Oh, well. Oh, no. That's half its hell. Kill it. Do what you must. I'm going to look away. <laughs> Die so quickly. Oh, no. Kill it. I, <laughs> I guess that's on the bright side. At least it wasn't in painful log or something like that. Oh. Oh, it got popped so quickly. That hurts my feelings so much. Oh, that was a very quick dungeon, though. Hopefully the rewards are incredible for us doing this as basically a speedrun. Future tech manual. Future tech manual. They were not. Red chest, gold key. Heat-resistant refined metal armor schematic. Yeah. Yeah, it is an upgrade, but again, it's not power metal armor, unfortunately. Trees. Okay, trees. Looking for these trees, great indicator for dungeons, by the way, is what I'm learning. Uh, once again, level 45, we go straight in, we should be fine. Let's just go straight to the boss. Have I accidentally gone to the boss, like, without even taking a single side path? Sure have. <gasps> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> don't make me do this. Oh, he's EP. No, they're all EP. Oh, we're about to annihilate them. Chill it, prove that you are 116 of. <laughs> Our Chillet is 116 of a Chillet's combined. <laughs> you stood no chance, Alpha. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> oh, and our reward for this one that we annihilated incredibly quickly is Heat Resistant Pal Armor Schematic Level 1. There we go. That's it. That's the big one. That's the big one that I've been looking for. I'm still going to do the rest of these uh, if we can find any more because I do still want to find accessories. But that's the big one. That's the, the big money that I was looking for. And alongside it... Future tech manual. Okay, these are very common. Um, they may say epic. That's a lie. They're just in every dungeon. But this, this is the big one. I'm going to make sure I don't accidentally like, drop that or anything stupid. I'm going to stop playing around with it. Heat resistant pal metal armor. Yes, I return to the base just so I can immediately start it being in production despite it even being nighttime. This is going to be another dungeon where it's just going to immediately have a route straight to the boss because I will take it. Oh my god, it might be. This, another one straight to the boss. Absolutely no side paths. Okay. A giant Van Worm Crisp. That's actually beautiful. I, I'll admit, Van Worm Crisp, one of the more pretty PAL designs in the game. I really like its wings. I think its wings are great. I'm going to annihilate it now, but it's pretty. Because I could. <laughs> Was it rude? Yes. Would I do it again? Also, probably yes. Aww. Oh. Oh, Blaris still isn't done. Still wants to knock his body around a little bit. And our rewards. This time. Thermal undershirt plus two. Yep. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. Um, that means I have no reason to even, like, wear cold resistant armor ever again. Which is great. Because we just got heat resistant power metal armor, which means this covers our accessories all the time, basically. You can also now use this again, I guess, uh, for more defense while we're just messing around with that. That's a nice pickup. Again, it's not the type of pendant that I'm looking for where it would like boost our defense and attack, 
because these are the big ones that I really want boosted, because we've already leveled a lot of HP. But, still useful. And, attack manual, of course. Hi, uh -huh, all your guns are jammed. I don't know why they break. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was about to say, I don't know why they break like that so often, and then they immediately shoot me. <laughs> Typical. Wampo, we meet again, giant beautiful beast. Bye, Wampo. What? Where, where did I just climb out of? What was that? Fourteen precious pelt. That's a couple. And with one Po destroyed, our rewards once again. Attack pendant plus two. Yes. Yes. This is what I've been longing for. All right, our attack currently with Vanguard, mind you, because that is boosting our attack by 10%, is 121. With the attack pendant plus two, 137. It is a 15% increase. Okay. Okay. Like I said, 30 was a little bit too high. 15, half of that. It's nothing crazy, but it is decent. I don't know if they would stack. If we were to get a second one, I don't know if we could just have both. Because that would get our attack pretty high, actually. Like, a 25% attack increase is not bad. It is not bad. Especially when we will have super effective hits. And we get the Dark Skill Fruit Dark Laser. I don't know if we're going to have a reason to use that on anyone, but... The option is nice. If we go get that Lylene knocked, we could maybe put it on Lylene knocked and we could bring Lylene knocked into the fight with us potentially. That sounds kind of fun. Let's go fight a Lylene knocked and then let's start preparing for our good old tower boss. Uh, there she is, the Empress of the Abyss, Lylene knocked. While we are a little bit lower level than it, we do currently have four dragons on our team, and dragon does resist dark. So I do think we have a decent shot at this, even though none of them are currently running dragon-type moves for super effective damage. That's where the shotgun comes in. We're about to test out this attack pendant, I suppose. We will start things off with a good old blizzard spike. A good old chill it way. While it's frozen, blast. Oh. Holy crap. <laughs> I... <laughs> I want to make it clear. I do want to catch one of these. However, the damage was so absurd, I couldn't help myself from nuking it out of how crazy powerful that was. Also, I saw a chest behind it. Gimme. Hydro laser. I can't tell you how tempted I am to put Hydro Laser on Chillet and bring it into the fight. I cannot tell you how tempted. I am so tempted. You know how funny that would be? <laughs> you know how funny it would be? <laughs> A Hydro Lasering Chillet in the final boss fight? Man, it's so tempting. It's so, so tempting. <laughs> but honestly, we're we'll probably be riding on Azrobe, and Azrobe already has it. But yeah, that went incredibly, incredibly well. That only leaves... Uh, the Blazemer and the Astagon fights, and then all of the legendaries around the map, which is uh, these other four legendaries, but three spots because Gladius and Acromus are together. Which means we are pretty much done with bosses. So I guess it's time to go ahead, pick up our heat-resistant pal metal armor, and get ourselves over to the good old power boss. Alright, back at base. Oh, our Black Marketer is crafting the armor and no one else? Not my Lylene or my Lunaris, neither of them. Just the Black Marketer is crafting. Well, thanks, buddy. What are you doing? What are you, what are you fingering? What? You have anything interesting to sell? Daphne, Gale Claws, Tombats, Cognitos. Interesting, interesting. Oh, now Lylene is working on it. Okay. I can't believe this isn't done yet, considering how far I have, how, how long I was gone. We can go ahead, grab these pal metal ingots that are done. We can slap those in. I have 575 pal metal ingots, which will also be useful for making legendary spheres. So I like having them. I'd like to ideally have, uh, let's say, 
I'd probably want a hundred legendary spheres before I go out legendary capturing. I don't know if it's going to take a hundred. I don't think it will. I think it will probably take more like 20 with my luck, but there's four of them and that leaves us room for error. So I'd like to have a hundred. All right, heat resistant, pal, metal, armor, plus one. 325 defense and nearly a thousand health. That is a nice upgrade. I do like that. That will help out a lot compared to our refined metal armor. It is a big fat increase. Let's bring our defense up to a good margin. We also have um, omelets to increase our attack power and those will be coming in useful. Uh, I have put away a lot of our things for this fight because I'm actually slightly nervous about it. This is a sign of weakness. You should not do this like me. But our team is going to be this. I think I, I've thought about it for a while. And I feel like this is probably the best team that we could run. I think Chilla with Hydro Laser would be very funny. However, I feel pretty confident in our damage with this current team. So we will be running two Yormantides with very good water moves, which are kind of like the main powerhouses that I hope will kind of carry the fight. I'm going to have a Dazzy on the team because we have Dazzy's necklace, so that will just always be firing alongside us. And Electric is neutral, which should be completely fine. It does also have Acid Rain if we need to throw it out, but I don't think we'll be throwing it out. Uh, we have Fenglope because Fenglope has a couple of water moves from when we caught it with Acid Rain and Aqua Burst. It's also kind of there for the mount idea that I had last time of if we're really in a pinch and we need to like restore our shields or we're going to die, I can get on Fenglope and dodge a good amount of attacks because it is very fast because it is swift. And then we have Azerobe, which I can try and mount and do a lot of damage with the shotgun because the shotgun blasts will turn to water type moves. So that's kind of my plan for the moment. I feel like I'm going to set them up like this. Obviously, for the most part, I'm going to have my two Yormantides kind of just doing their thing. Uh, preferably the Brave one out the most, so I'm even going to set him in slot one. We're optimizing this as much as possible. Let's go ahead and sleep, and then let's head over to the boss. Here we are, ready to go ahead and enter ourselves the Desert Tower. We have ourselves our Yormantides ready to go. We have ourselves our omelets ready to go. I did this last time. I kind of just slapped an omelet on everyone. I'm not sure if this actually boosts all of their attack power um, after the transition screen, but I'm going to assume it does. And we're going to go ahead and get ourselves involved. Let's go. Boss battle time. Oh, he's got the squad. He's the important dude. Also, he's wearing his cape like that, which is, I mean, you, you know this dude's not messing around. Okay, he's just flexing on us. What the hell? Hey, don't do that. Valeris. Hey, I have one of those. That means I know it's weaknesses. Weaknesses falling off of a cliff so it can't hit things with its attacks. I don't know if that's going to help us here, though. Marcus and Phalaris. All right, Yormantide. Go nuts. Go nuts, buddy. Big Hydro lasers. Uh, we are not going to be uh, trying to save any shotgun shots. We're just going to be blasting pretty much full time. If I can have attacks on me, I'm kind of cool with that. As it has just gone ahead and used its big Phoenix attack, I'm very curious as to the damage this will do. Holy hell. Okay, okay, okay. That was good damage, though. That was good damage. Get that bubble blast off. Gonna fire off the Hydro Laser. A ton of damage is coming out. I'm feeling very confident in damage. I'm feeling more confident in my damage and less confident in my survivability right now which is interesting. Not how I thought it was going to go. I was worried that I would not be doing enough damage, actually, of all things. Um, we're going to stop our uh, Yormantide getting hit by all those electric attacks that it apparently has. Just swap Yormantides. I mean, if we've done, like, a third of its health in a minute, then I think we're going to be fine. I think we're going to be doing just fine. A little shotgun in the butt technique. <laughs> the classic technique. You can use the pillars to actually block some of the attacks from this one, which is nice, because there have been some moments where we weren't able to against some of the other bosses. 
Every time the lightning is on me and not Yormontide, that's a win. Because I can dodge the lightning pretty easily. We are going to not let him get attacked by that. Bring out the strong Yormontide again. I'm actually going to... Uh-oh. Wiggle! I don't think we dodged it. We did not dodge it. Sadly, our Yormontide is in fact fat. And we did not dodge it. That is one Yormontide down. That is not good. That is actually terrible. Okay. There's our stronger Yormontide dead. I really thought I could wiggle out of the giant <laughs> lightning AoE, which, yeah, I guess that wouldn't work like that. We are going to prioritize dodging. I don't have... I want to use Azerobe, but I'm... <sighs> I don't have my shield up. When my shield's up, I will feel confident to send out Azerobe. Also, the Hydro Laser effect. Oh my god. Why do you have so many lightning attacks? I mean, I guess it makes sense. It's covering its weakness. But also, stop it. <laughs> it's not allowed. <laughs> yeah, the Hydro Laser sound effect, this thing bugs out a lot for me. It bugged out a lot when I was fighting uh, Suzaku bosses with my Yormontide. I don't know why it does it. I apologize, but there's literally nothing I can do. Not in the middle of the boss fight, anyway. Do flip them around. It is a very annoying bug. I hope that that's the bug that they fix next in the game, honestly. It is just the Yormontide sound bug. Okay, shotgun damage. Uh-oh. The draw. Okay, nice. Uh, we are going to send out Azerobe. Azerobe, if you could, like, Hydro Laser or something, and then I'm going to just jump on. Okay, never mind. We're just going to get on out of that one. Throw it out. Let's go. Big damage. That damage is actually crazy. Like, that is so worth doing every time that I can. I will sacrifice my shields for that damage any day. Uh, I will not sacrifice my Yormontide in an Ignis Rage, though. <laughs> I'm so sorry about the sound effect. There's always something that has to go wrong in the cool fight. <laughs> Man. They're gonna dodge the big blow attack. Yeah, crushing it in terms of DPS, though. Absolutely crushing it. That's scary. Okay. Yormontide did take a lot of damage. However, even if Yormontide goes down, I'm confident that me on top of an Azerobe can easily finish this. So let's go ahead and get Azerobe out. We're going to do it again. Blast. Not a care in the world. Just blasting away with this water-type shotgun. Absolutely blasting. All right. Back to Yormontide. Yormontide might even be able to, like, finish it. Uh, not like that, it won't. Dodge. We recall, we dodge. I don't know how much damage Dazzy has been doing. I have not been paying the most attention to it, I will be honest. I don't know if it was worth bringing or not. I mean, I guess it was, because, like, I haven't even used Fenglo. So, compared to that, it's obviously worth it. And there we go. A very, very clean fight. <laughs> With the stupid Hydro Laser in the background. <laughs> Overall, I think shotguns might just be crazy. It makes me consider whether our Chillet, with its dragon enhancing powers, because this, yeah, I need to, I need to show exactly what I'm saying. We're we're going back to base. We're going back to base. It makes me wonder if our Chillet, with its level 5 Wriggling Weasel, to apply the dragon damage to our attacks, is worth having as our main damage source against the final boss on Shadow Beak. I wonder if we get, like, a legendary assault rifle and a legendary shotgun so we can flip between them and just absolutely melt. Especially the assault rifle, because if we can shoot from a distance without having to be point blank in its face, that could be crazy. I wonder if this is going to be our key to beating the final boss. Like, don't get me wrong, chill it with a bunch of dragon moves will be incredibly effective. However, the shotgun damage was nutty. So, I'm pretty sure that that's the way to go. I'm, I'm in love with my shotgun. What can I say? But that is going to be it for this episode. That was incredibly successful. 
The attack pendant was very useful. The omelette for our attack boost as well. Seems like that's still active from food. So yes, that did last. Bringing us to 151 attack power, which means we basically had an extra 50% damage. Plus, with Azeroth turning all of our attacks to water attacks, we basically doubled that, meaning we had 300% damage per shotgun hit. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. It's going to be hard to convince me that that's not a great strategy for the final fight as well. But in the next episode, I think we are going to start going ahead and taking a look at some of the legendaries like Jet Dragon, Rostalion, and Palladius Necromus. So if you guys have enjoyed this episode, leave a like down below, hit that subscribe button, and without further ado, bye.